This conference will now be recorded. Started. Good morning. Good morning, my dear students. Today we are going to uh, discuss about the practical slides, practical uh, parasitology slides. Today we are discussing, I uh, will show some slides. In the examination, we have to identify the slides. We'll get uh, two or three slides. Among the three, we have we have to identify uh, all the three slides. Then only we'll get the mark. Now, the, the part one, parasitology slides. First, tinea uh, uh, scolex and tinea saginata. Tinea scolex, all of you know that. These are the tapeworm uh, slides, tapeworm slides. Tape of all of you know, this is, uh, these are the uh, uh, both uh, male and female reproductive organs are present in the one worm, both male and female adult worm and a larval form and the egg. These are the three stages we can see in the uh, cystodes, adult worm, larva and egg. Suppose if you see the adult worm, there are different parts in the adult worm. What are they? Uh, the, it contains the uh, head and uh, neck and uh, body head neck and body these are the three parts we have to see in the adult uh, form what are the adult form the adult form consisting of head which is nothing but a scolex the adult form contains the first part that is called head it is also called scolex the scolex is the head of the part of the tape neck and the Probilla body. Hello. I did a class loan on a moment. Agenda. A public. Okay. 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 The head, scolex, neck, and strobilla body. The adult bomb is similar to any cyclophilidian cystor. Any cyclophilidian. The cyclophilidian cystors. And pseudophilidian cystoid. There are two types of cystoids. Cyclophilidium, the head of it can which is appears like a circle that is called cyclophilidian cystoid. And pseudophilidium, there is no the the uh, circles uh, etc. present. The pseudophilidium like uh, trematodes. Trematodes uh, heads are called uh, pseudophilidian cystoids. Pseudophilidian cystoids. There are two worms in that uh, tape worms. The first is the tinea saginata and tinea scolex. Tinea saginata and tinea solium. The tinea saginata is a uh, the beef tape worm. Tinea saginata is a beef tape worm. Tinea solium is a pork tape worm. Tinea solium is a pork tape worm. We have to differentiate the these are three worm, uh, two tape worms. What is the definitive host? The definitive host of the tinea solium and tinea saginata are man. The definitive host of Tinea solium and tinea saginata are man. The intermediate host in case of tinea saginata is cow or buffalo, the cattle. Tinea saginata is the, the intermediate host is cattle. In, in case of tinea solium, the intermediate host is pig. Which organ is affected in tinea solium and tinea saginata? The intestine. The intestine is affected, particularly the small intestine is affected. The small intestine, which is the absorbed food, nutrient foods, which are present in the small intestine. Whatever present in the small intestine that will be taken by the tinea. That will be taken by the tinea. That is why the, there will be a loss. There, uh, there are uh, the deficiency of the vitamins, deficiency of the nutrients will occur because of this uh, tinea solium and tinea saginata. The definitive host is man. Definitive host is uh, man. The intermediate host is either cattle or pork. They will give infection. They so that because of that, the man will affect it. There will be a intestinal teniasis. There will be intestinal teniasis. Suppose if you see the slide the chart, tinea solium. It is an arm type form. Arm type form. Arm type type form means there will be a hook plates, uh, rostellum which are present. That is why it is called armed scolex. Armed tape worm. Scolex is a small one and a globular. The scolex is small and globular. It contains four suckers. 
the four suckers are present in the, the end of the scolex of the tinea solium. The size of this uh, tinea scolex is one millimeter in diameter. It is armed with the two rows of two rows are present surrounding the, um, uh, the end part. Uh, there are there are two rows of uh, hooks or hooklets are present. Two rows of hooklets are present, and there is their um, rostellum which projects on the top of the scolex. The four cup-like muscular suckers. There are the the four suckers are present. Four cup-like suckers are present, which helps in the attachment. What is the importance of scolex? What is the importance of suckers? The suckers will attach to the small intestine of the human host. The suckers will attach to the small intestine. There are four suckers. These four suckers are acetabulum, or because of the acetabulum or suckers, which helps in the attachment to the small intestine of the human host. There are four suckers at present. This uh, size is one, milli one millimeter in diameter. The scolex has a beak like apical protrusion. There is a apical protrusion called that is called rostellum. That is rostellum. The rostellum is armed with the hooklets. That is why it is called armed tapeworm. Why it is armed tapeworm? The rostellum is uh, contains uh, hooklets. The rostellum contains hooklets are present in the tinea's solium. Tinea solium, the, uh, the, the rostellum is contains uh, hooklets. That is why it is called armed tapeworm. But in case of tinea saginata, the hooklets are absent. That is why it is unarmed uh, tapeworm. Unarmed tapeworm. Why it is called armed tapeworm? The rostellum is armed with the hooklets, two rows of hooklets. Two rows of hooklets, uh, which are 22 to 23, which are present on the surrounding the uh, surface of the head scolex. That is called, it is called as uh, armed tapeworm. Armed tapeworm. See, it is an armed tapeworm. Four suckers are cup like projections are there. Cup like projections are there. The cup like projections, which are the uh, attached to the small intestine, hooklets are also there. See, the hooklets are also there. It is a round globular structure. The round globular structure of the uh, tape comb is called tinea solium. Round globular structure and booklets are present. Round uh, the beak like structure that is called rostella. Beak like structure is called a small beak like structure that is called rostella. And the booklets are present. Booklets are surrounding that uh, rostella. And four couple like suckers are there. Four couple like suckers. See the diagram. In this diagram, we have to given in the examination we have to identify this uh, tinea solium uh, scolex tinea solium scolex we have to see the neck is also there it is situated next to the head it is situated below the head it is a narrow growing region from which proglatids arises neck is longer in case of tinea saginata but it is neck is very short we can't identify the neck also in case of tinea solium. It is a narrow growing region from which proglatids are arises. Proglatids are coming from the neck. Proglatids are coming from the neck. This uh, next body or strobila. What is body? It is a trunk or body. The tinea solium trunk or body. It consists of many segments or proglatids. The third part that is called body or strobila or trunk. It contains many segments or proglatids. It contains many segments or proglatids. The segments are three types. Segments are there. What are they? Segments are three types. Immature segments, proglatids, mature proglatids, and gravid proglatids. Immature, mature, and a gravid. Please, all of you draw the diagram. Please draw the diagram of this tinea solium. Diagram neck is very short, can't identify sometimes. The suckers are there, four suckers are there, rostellum is there, hooklets are there, and uh, it is there is a body is there. The body contains uh, segments, the body contains strobila contains uh, segments, body contains and contains segments. The tape form proglatids, please all of you know three pro proglatids are present, immature proglatids. Mature proglatids and gravid proglatids. The mature proglatid contains male and the female reproductive organs. Mature proglatids contains male and female organs are there in the mature. But in the immature, male and female organs are 
not identified, differentiated. Can't tell which is male, which is female. Can't tell. That is why it is called immature. It is a hermaphrodite. The tapeworm is a hermaphrodite. Both male and female reproductive organs are present in the same womb. Male and female reproductive organs are present in the same womb. That is why it is called hermaphrodite tapeworm. Is there is no differentiation? Both no male, no male and female. Only one womb. In case of uh, uh, the other, other worms, nematodes, in case of nematodes, there is a male nematode, female nematode, male uh, round worm, female round worm, male hook worm, female hook worm, like that. The different uh, male pin worm, female pin worm, they like that. Different differentiation is there. But here, there is no differentiation. Both male and female organs are present in the same single worm. Male and female reproductive organs are present in the same if differentiated in the present in the same form, particularly in the proglatids. We can tell that the organs are present. In the immature proglatid, immature proglatid, male and female organs are undifferentiated. Male and female organs are undifferentiated. In the mature, male and female organs are differentiated and identifiable. In the gravid, gravid means it is a uterus filled with eggs. It is a uterus filled with eggs. Uh, and uh, these eggs are filled, uh, these eggs are mature and they will be expanded in the feces of the tapeworm and also in the human feces. See, the female organs uh, contains ovary, branched, closed uterus, uteide, single mass of vital end gland and a laterally situated genital pore. Male contains uh, testis, uh, vas deferens and serous like this. Male organs, female organs. The female organ contains ovary, uteide, vital end gland, etc. In the male, the testes, etc. present. These are differentiated in the mature proglite and also in the gravid proglite. But in case of immature, we can't uh, differentiate it. Immature proglite. We can see the these proglites in the slide also. You can see the slide. Suppose if you, if you will be asked in the examination, uh, we have to tell is mature which is gravid which is immature see the which, uh, below one is immature proglatid immature proglatid we can't differentiate in the mature proglatid male and female organs the ovary and the testes etc are differentiated but in the gravid proglite uh, we can differentiate everything particularly uterus and ova we can differentiate this is the slide of uh, uh, the tapeworm proglatids Type form proglatid. We have to identify. We have to identify. We have to identify this. Sir. You know the you know the eggs also. So the eggs are excreted from the gravid proglatid. The fertilization of eggs sacs occurring, released into the and fill the gravid proglatids. The tiny eggs are round, 30 to 40 microns in size, covered by two layers. Outer egg shell filled with yolk material. Embryo four is present inside. Embryo 4 is present and three pairs of booklets are there. Three pairs of booklets are present. And uh, this is the embryo 4 is nothing but uh, the radially striated uh, brown thick walled material that is called embryo 4. And three pairs of booklets are present. We can't differentiate tinea solium and tinea saginata X. We can't differentiate tinea solium and tinea saginata egg by seeing them by microscopically. By seeing the microscopically. We can't differentiate tinea solium, tinea saginata, even other type form also, echinococcus also in the microscope, we can't differentiate. That is why uh, the, the morphology of the egg is the uh, same. Morphology of the egg of the tinea solium, tinea saginata, and echinococcus egg is the uh, same. And uh, but we can't by some staining we can differentiate. Tinea saginata is the egg is the acid fast, tinea solium egg is non-acid. There is the uh, there is a some differentiation. These are the structures of the adult worm. Adult worm means adult worm the head the scolex and the neck and the proglatids. Scolex are head, neck and proglatids. We have to tell these proglatids are uh, in various. Uh, in case of uh, tinea solium, 800 to 1000 proglatids are present. In case of tinea saginata, 1000 to 2000 proglatids are present. Tinea solium. 7 to 13 lateral branches are present. Tinea solium, 7 to 13 lateral branches are present. In tinea saginata, 15 to 20 lateral branches are present. 15 to 20 lateral branches are present in the case of proglatid inside. 
uterus, uterus proglandi, lateral branches, uterus uh, lateral branches. So you can tell, you can see, please all of you see the lateral branches of the proglandi uterus, lateral branches of the uterus, and the lobes of the ovaries also. Three to two lobes with the axillary lobe is present in case of tinea solium. In tinea saginata, two no axillary lobe is present in the tinea saginata. Test is present both tinea saginata and tinea solium. Vaginal sphincter, vaginal sphincter is present in the tinea saginata. The sphincter, vaginal sphincter is absent in case of tinea solium. These expulsion, the expulsion of these uh, segments uh, expelled singly in the feces in case of uh, tinea saginata. In tinea solium, expelled in chain of uh, five to six segments in the feces, in the human feces, the five to six uh, segments are expelled from the feces, expelled in the feces in case of tinea solium. In tinea saginata, expelled in a singly in the feces. X are present per gravid segment. How many X are present? There are thousands of X are present in the gravid segment. In case of tinea solium, 40,000 X per gravid segment. 40,000 X are present. In tinea saginata, 80,000 X per gravid segment. 80,000 X are present per, per single segment, gravid segment. This is the structure of the proglatids. Head, neck and proglatids. Head, neck and proglatids. And this is about the adult bomb. This adult bomb we have to identify. The adult bomb, what is the adult bomb? See, there is a structures, suckers, four suckers are there, globular suckers suckers are present, the beak like rostellum, and the hooklets are there, hooklets are there, uh, uh, two pairs of uh, two rows of hooklets are there, and along with that, uh, the in tinea saginata, there is it is unarmed scolex, unarmed scolex, and along with that, the proglatids, premature proglatids, mature proglatids, and the gravid proglatids. Immature, mature, and gravid proglatids. The immature means we can't differentiate male and female organs. In mature, male and female organs are differentiated and identified in gravid, which contains uterus uh, filled with X, uh, expelled in the feces. Uh, thousands of X, uh, 40,000 uh, to 80,000 X are excreted. In case of tinea solium, 40,000 X are excreted in the feces per segment. If sometimes many segments are excreted, many segments are expelled in the feces in tinea solium. In tinea saginata, a single segment is excreted. 80,000 eggs are excreted per gravid segment. This is about the proglatids of the tinea solium and tinea saginata. Proglatids of the tinea solium and tinea saginata. This uh, slide also we have to identify. Next, faciola hepatica. Facial hepatica. What is facial hepatica? It is a liver fluke. Second slide, third slide. Faciola hepatica, it is a liver fluke what is liver fluke the liver fluke is a constant is a facial hepatica the common name is for the common liver fluke or sheep liver fluke common liver fluke or sheep liver fluke the disease is called faciola faciolasis faciolasis it also not only in the humans sometimes the sheep and other domestic animals are also excreted domestic animals are also excreted. What is the habitat of this facial hepatica? It habitat is the parasite lives in the hepatica means liver and bile ducts. Hepatica means liver and bile ducts. Uh, the worm, adult worm, lives the parasite lives in the uh, liver and the bile duct. The facial infection is a cosmopolitan. It is a zoonotic disease. It is the animal from animals. It is uh, spread to the humans. That is why this disease is called zoonotic disease it is worldwide prevalence of 17 million cases about 17 million cases it is particularly endemic in the sheep rising countries where the sheep rising is there in those countries uh, this uh, infection facial hepatic infection is common in india it is uh, extremely uncommon in india it is extremely uncommon few cases are reported from the north and northeastern uh, particularly Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, etc. Uh, coming to the adult bomb. What is the adult bomb? The adult bomb of this facial hepatica. Today we are going to discuss about the, the hepatica adult bomb. It is a leaf shaped. It is a leaf shaped facial worm possessing ovaries and testes, which are highly branched, occupy a large part of the body. 
ovaries and testes are present. Both male and female reproductive organs are present in the adult worm. Both male and uh, female organs are present in the single worm facial hepatica. It is covered by segment. It is covered by segment. And uh, it is grayish brown in color. Grayish brown in color. Leaf shaped. It is my important point is, is the leaf shaped. Large in size. Brown color. Large in color. Large in shape. And a brown color. There are suckers. The anterior hand has a conical projection that is also called shoulder, oral sucker, containing oral sucker when their posterior end is rounded. Posterior end is rounded. The anterior end is a conical projection. It is contains oral sucker. Posterior end is rounded. Please all of you see the anterior end and posterior end. Anterior end and posterior end of the adult worm of fasciola hepatica. Anterior end of posterior end of fasciola hepatica. The anterior end contains oral sucker. The posterior end is rounded. The ventral sucker is situated away from the oral sucker. There is also sucker is there, second sucker. There is a ventral sucker that is present away from the oral sucker present away from the oral sucker. The oral sucker and ventral sucker are different. Oral sucker and ventral sucker are different. Along with that, the uterus is present, ovary is present, testis is present, seminal vesicles are present, wood type is present, cecum is present, etc. There are many intestinal organs, reproductive organs, everything is present in this uh, uh, adult bone. Everything is present in the adult bone. It is a leaf-shaped adult bone. Facial hepatica is a Leaf shape, please allow to see the leaf shape. It is like a leaf. It is like, like a leaf. Along with that, uh, the other organs are there. Oral sucker, ventral sucker, genital pore, uterus, ovary, testis, and uh, GAD, cecum is present. The intestine is bifurcated. The intestine is bifurcated and incomplete and also contains uh, lateral branches. The intestine is bifurcated. Bifurcated intestine is present. Intestine is bifurcated in the adult form and incomplete. And also it contains lateral branches are present. Lateral branches are from arising from this intestine, lateral branched intestine. It is a branch bifurcated. Branches are bifurcated. The bifurcated intestine from the bifurcation, there are branches are coming from that intestine, bifurcated intestine. Okay, this is this is about the adult worm. Next, the, any uh, worm contains not only adult worm, eggs are present and larval forms are present. Eggs are oval in shape or bile strained eggs, unimpregnated and operculated eggs are present. Operculated, operculated means there is a lid which is present in whatever at one end. At one end, there is a operculum, the lid like structure is present in the egg. Lid like structure is present in the egg. That is the it is a oval in shape. The eggs are oval in shape, by stained operculum is present in the adult womb, the egg of the fasciola hepatica. It is about more than 100 to 130 microns in size and length and 60 to 100 microns in thickness. 60 to 100 microns in thickness. You can't differentiate the fasciola hepatica and other facial abscess, busky, etc. This is about the egg of the operculated egg of the fasciola hepatica. Operculated egg of the fasciola hepatica. The larval form is also there in tinea solium and tinea saginata. There is a cysti circus bovis and cysti circus cellulose larval forms. Cysti circus cellulose and cysti circus bovis in tape forms. And uh, uh, tinea solium and tinea saginata. Tinea solium and tinea saginata, the larval forms are Cysti circus and cysti circus cellulose and cysti circus bovis. But here the larval form is, uh, which are, it is a metacercarial larva, is the infective form, and other larval form of uh, Mirasidium radiae and sporocyst. Mirasidium radiae, type radiae 1, radiae type 2, and sporocyst, etc., present in case of uh, the, the fasciola hepatica. This is a leaf shaped adult form, oral end, oral sucker, ventral sucker. The anterior end is round and posterior end is uh, anterior end is pointed and posterior end is uh, broad and there are uh, various organs like uh, different branched and bifurcated intestine and uh, male and female 
reproductive organs, etc., present. This is a leaf shaped fasciola hepatica. Next, third, Trichinella spiralis. Trichinella spiralis. The given slide shows uh, Trichinella spiralis. See, there is a coiled larva of the Trichinella spiralis. Coiled larva of the Trichinella spiralis, which is a the nematode, which is present in the intestine, present in the, the somatic somatic type of uh, uh, worm. Trichinella spiralis is a somatic type of it. Is the habitat is uh, the uh, skeletal muscles, striated muscles, particularly the muscles. Uh, Heavily parasitized, in particular in the organs like uh, diaphragm muscles, diaphragm muscles, intercostalis major, deltoid, biceps muscles, etc. It is the skeletal muscles, striated muscles. Uh, these larval forms are present. The trichinella spiralis are present. Please all of you see the, the larval form of uh, the trichinella spiralis, uh, which is a nematode, which is a nematode. Trichinella spiralis is a nematode is present in the central. There is a coiled larva of the trichinella spiralis uh, mm -hmm. present in the slide. Present in the slide. Next, moving to the most important uh, worm, the microphylaria larva. Microphylaria larva. The microphylaria is a nematode, somatic nematode. The microphylaria is a somatic, it is a larval form of Ocaria bancrofti or Loa Loa or Brugia malai. There are larval, there are filarial worms are there, various filarial worms. The filarial worms like uh, Ocrania bancrofti, Brugia malai, Lova lava, and uh, um, various uh, Marsonella, etc. There are different uh, filarial worms are there. In uh, particularly in India, South India, um, there are two worms, larval filarial worms common. The first one is Ocrania bancrofti and Brugia malai. Ocrania bancrofti and uh, Brugia malai. It is a microphylaria is a larva, an infective form of the any filarial worm. The filarial worm, larval form, the common name for this uh, larval form of uh, any filarial worms is uh, microphylaria. Particularly, these worms are present in the peripheral blood. Particularly, these larval forms are present in the peripheral blood. Suppose if you stain with Leishman or Jimsa, Leishman or Jimsa, we can identify the larval form. Larval forms. It consisting of a uh, hyaline sheath which presents at the both sides in which a uh, larva can move. Larva can move. First, before going to discuss about the larval forms, we have to know the uh, adult worm of the Ocaria bancrofti. Adult worm. What is adult worm? The adult worms are located in the lymphatic vessels, lymphatic vessel systems and lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes of the human. They are the worms are long, slender. White thread like structures, white thread like structures. The size about uh, 4 centimeters. The adult worm size about 4 centimeters. And there are both male and female worms. Both male uh, vocal area and female vocal area. Both male vocal area and female vocal area. Nematode it is a nematode. That is why male and female organs are separate. Male and female worms are separate. Both male and female uh, worms are adult worms are there. How to differentiate can be differentiated by their small size. Males are differentiated from female by their small size uh, and tail structure, spicules, etc. Present in the posterior end, etc. By that, uh, can differentiate the both male and female reproductive organs. These are both and uh, both uh, adult worms, uh, male and female, uh, present in the organs, internal organs. Uh, uh, they remain coiled together. They coiled together, both male and female file together, fertilize, and uh, they liberate larva, and this larva will circulate in the peripheral blood also, circulate in the peripheral bloods. The females are viviparous, particularly the viviparous means immediately after uh, the eggs coming, they hatched out and the larva comes out. That is why they are viviparous. That directly the larva will produce viviparous. Directly there is, we can't see the eggs of the the filarial worms. I want to see the eggs of the filarial worms. Uh, they are viviparous. Viviparous. Okay. This is about the uh, adult worm of the filarial adult worm. Filarial worms. Coming to the larva of the Ocaria bancrofti. What is the, the larval form? The larval form of is called la, the microfilarial larva. It is uh, found in the blood vessels. Blood vessels in the peripheral blood. Is present in the blood and the 
peripheral blood. It is measuring about uh, uh, 200, uh, more than 200 microns in size. The length is uh, 200 microns to 300 microns in size. It is covered by the a layer that is called as a hyaline sheath. It is covered by the hyaline sheath. It is the most important the, uh, sheath which is present surrounding the larval form, surrounding the microfilaria larva, surrounding the microfilaria larva. The head end is blunt. Usually, the head end is blunt and the tail end is pointed. The larval form, head end is blunt and, uh, and tail end is uh, pointed. We can't see in unstained films. Uh, we can't see in suppose we see the uh, in the wet mount uh, these uh, larval forms we can't see we have to stain by the stain the peripheral smear and we can observe we have to observe the the by observe after staining the uh, peripheral smear by gemsa and leishman stain gemsa and any rhomus stains we, we, are, we can identify the microfilaria larva there are the different there are different uh, components are present in the larval form these components are called nuclei the nuclei are present uh, uh, throughout the body except uh, head and the tail part except uh, head and tail part uh, the nuclei are absent in case of larval pharmacokinetia the head and tail parts uh, the nuclei are absent head and tail part the nuclei are absent and also in some places in the body that is not important but mainly in the head and tail part uh, the nuclei are absent we can tell by various uh, um, microfilaria larvae of various uh, worms. See, there is a hyaline sheath is present. The hyaline sheath is present. The uh, surrounding the worm, the head part, uh, the nuclei are absent. In the tail part, uh, uh, also nuclei are absent. The nuclei is in the, also in the absent in the tail part. We can uh, see the the larval form of the microfilaria larva. There is a different structures of the microfilaria larva. There are different structures of the microfilaria larva. What are they? The different structures. The first is the sheath, microfile and the island sheath. And the first, the uh, absent area, the head part of the uh, absent area of the uh, microfile larva is called cephalic space. Where the nuclei are absent, that space is called cephalic space. And other area where nuclei are absent, uh, second part that is called nerve ring is also there. Nerve ring is there. And the genital cells are also there. Genital cells are also there in the case of. Uh, larval form we have to please all of you draw the diagram microfilaria larva of ocaria bankruptcy microfilaria larva it is a sheath larva it is a sheath larva there are other larval forms are also there some are sheath some are unsheathed some are unsheathed microfilaria larva of uh, the the uh, filarial worms uh, like uh, oncosarca oncosarca valvulus there is no hyaline sheath and mansonella persistence there is no hyaline sheath and mansonella streptocerca there is no hyaline sheath and Marsonella wasardi. There is no hyaline sheath. But uh, in case of Lova Lova, Brugia malari, and the Vocaria bankrupti, microfilarial larval forms uh, contains uh, hyaline sheath. Microfilarial larval forms contains hyaline sheath. The hyaline sheath is important for the identification of the identification of the microfilarial larva. Identification of the microfilarial larva. This microfilarial larva exhibits. Uh, Periodicity exhibits periodicity. It is nothing but the where the, the larval forms are observed, seen in the peripheral blood. There is a nocturnal periodicity, there is a diurnal periodicity, and there is a subperiodicity and non-periodicity. Particularly, the Ocaria bankrupti and Brugia malai, they exhibit nocturnal periodicity. There is, it is nothing but the time when most of the microfilaria are found in the peripheral blood. That is called nocturnal periodicity. That is called nocturnal periodicity. The nocturnal periodicity uh, it is particularly for Vocaria bankrupti and Brugia malai, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. This uh, during this time, the larval forms uh, are uh, coming to the peripheral blood from the body inside to coming to the peripheral part, peripheral smear, peripheral blood. That is called nocturnal periodicity. It is a night time, particular night time between 9, after 9 uh, up to 2 a.m. Early morning, 2 a.m. 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. This is the uh, time period for the Vocaria bankruptcy and Brugia malai. During this time, the microfilaria larva will present in the peripheral blood. 
but why because the mosquito will come during this time and they will take the, uh, the larval forms and there is a so, so there is a development in the mosquito culex mosquito for that uh, the nocturnal periodicity is there from the 9 pm to 2 am for the brugia malai and ocaria bancrofti the nocturnal periodicity is a night time that is a 9 pm to 2 am this microfairy will come into the petrol plant. Sometimes uh, some larva, diurnal periodicity is there, both night and daytime also, daytime particular, daytime. Diurnal, that is called daytime, uh, the larval worms will come. So there is no, no night time. That is the low African worms, lower, lower. And subperiodic, present throughout with slight increase in the afternoon. That is the, in case of, uh, there is a subperiodic. Non periodic is there, non periodic. Any time, non periodic means there is no time for the um, there is no time for the observation of the worms uh, micro larval forms that is called oncocerca monsonella oncocerca particularly for this mukaria uh, bancroft and brugia malai there is a nocturnal periodicity is there. nocturnal periodicity is there that is uh, 9 pm to 2 am 9 pm to 2 am these uh, slides uh, we have to identify this uh, slides we have to identify the periodicity which is the biological and adaptation of the microfilaria to the feeding habit of the mosquito the feeding mosquito culex mosquito bites in the night that is why the night time there is the coming suppose it is a edis mosquito is a vector for this uh, it is a particular daytime mosquito that is why the larval forms will coming to the morning time daytime that is the the importance of the uh, uh, the periodicity nocturnal periodicity and diurnal periodicity and sub periodicity etc this is the slide we have to draw the diagram and observe and thank you